This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Right guys, well in part one we uh, completed the model of the lunchbox. In uh, this part we are going to look at uh, the preparation of the model before we can go into Substance Painter to, um, to texture it. So a couple of things I've done here. If we select our model and we go to Windows and Outliner, uh, here we go. You can see that I have grouped everything into a, uh, a group called Lunchbox. And you simply do that by selecting everything, drag select it, hit Control G on your uh, G for Gerard. So hit Control G on your uh, keyboard and uh, group that together and name it. And every individual part underneath is named as well. Okay, so I got the bottom part, I got the top part, I got the hinge in the front, I got the handle on top, and then in the back, the hinge and hinge. Okay, these are all the components you need for your lunchbox. And then what is uh, important next is you need to properly UV this. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do the UV part in this tutorial. Uh, I assume you have a basic understanding of how to UV. And if you do not, I have a complete playlist on how to UV objects, okay? But if you go up to UV and UV editor, you can see that I have UV'd this entire lunch box. All right. So uh, it's clean. I have deleted the history. So I go up to edit, delete by type history and I have frozen the transformations as well. So if you go to, uh, let's see, modify and freeze transformations, and that will set every object on um, the value of zero as far as the uh, location of the object is concerned, okay? So it's grouped, every part is named, it's UV'd, what else? Now, when we go into Substance Painter, we need to apply materials to certain parts of our object. So we kind of need to identify which parts of our object will have the same material, okay? Now I know that this part and this part will have the same uh, black metal with uh, scratches and so forth. So what I'll do here is I'll just uh, right click, go to assign new material. Uh, we'll do a simple Lambert. And just for identification purposes, we'll create it yellow, whatever. And we'll rename this to black underscore metal. Okay. So what else? We got our handle on top, which is probably something uh, chrome looking. So we'll do that. Assign new material, Lambert, and we'll just change that to, I don't know, blue or so. And we'll call this Chrome. And actually, this guy right here and the hinge on the back have the same look. So I got that selected. I'm going to right click, go to assign existing material, and we'll do that Chrome material. Okay. So now, if we select this on our yellow, we have a black metal material applied. And the blue here is chrome and so forth. Okay, so now that we have all that done, what is left is for us to uh, select the whole thing. We're going to go to File, we're going to go to uh, Export Selection. If I can find it, where do you go? Export Selection, there we go. Option Box. Uh, we can select it as an FBX or, for example, an OBJ. I'll go with FBX. I'm going to leave everything at default. I'm going to click on Export Selection, and I'm going to pick a location where I want to save this out. Now, I already have uh, created a Lunchbox folder here, so we'll call this Lunchbox FBX, okay? And Export Selection. All right, so now it's time to jump into Substance Painter. Here we go. All right, guys, here we are in Substance Painter, and we are in Substance Painter 2.30 to be exact. Now, for the most part, if you don't have this exact version of Substance Painter, you should be okay, as I'm gonna approach it fairly basically for the main reason because I've been asked to do that, okay? Um, 
So we're gonna keep it pretty basic, all right? And we're gonna do more advanced uh, videos in Substance Painter in the future, but for now, we're just gonna get through this and give our lunchbox a nice texture, okay? So we're gonna just uh, close this out here. Before we get started, make sure we all have the same layout. So I'm gonna go to view and reset user interface. So if yours looks different, it should now look the same. Depending on your screen resolution, your uh, pictures and icons could be bigger or smaller, uh, but for the main part, it should look the same, okay? So with that all done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File and New. And here we have a couple of options that we can fill out. Now for the template, because this is a metal lunchbox, I'm gonna leave that at uh, PBR Metal Rough, but you got a couple of options here they can choose from. I'm gonna leave it at that, okay? Here we can select our mesh. We're gonna do that in a sec. We have some options here that are related to what game engine you're gonna use uh, with your model, if any. And uh, for example, the DirectX and the OpenGL is related to that. But I'm gonna leave all that stuff alone. Okay, now for the document resolution, uh, I'm gonna go with a 2K map size for the maps that will be generated. So ambient occlusion, normal and so forth. And that is all done uh, by uh, Substance Painter. If you decide not to load up your previously made mats, maps, and that's what we do here. So let's say you already have uh, baked normal maps in XNormal or ZBrush or whatever. You can add them here manually and if not, you will have Substance Painter create them for you. Now, the reason I can't click OK yet is because I haven't selected a mesh. So I'm gonna go to Select. I'm gonna select my Lunchbox FBX that we exported out of Maya, and I'm gonna hit OK. So that's all set, and let's hit OK right here. We'll give it a second, and there you have it. There's your Lunchbox. So if we move this around by just simply holding Alt and left-clicking, and look around, you see we have the hinges on the back, we have our top and bottom part of our lunchbox, our handle and our front hinge, okay? Now what's important here is that in Maya, we defined materials, you remember that color ID map, the blue and the yellow? Well, the blue and the yellow isn't visible. I did that for my personal use, but what's important is that we defined by uh, writing down black underscore metal and chrome, what types of materials you wanted to add to this object, okay? So the black metal will be the top and the bottom. And if I turn that off by simply clicking on this little ball here, those objects will disappear. I can do the same for the chrome parts. So all that I have right now is all the parts that will become chrome. And right now I got everything that will become black metal, okay? Pretty important. All right, so we got all that. Now, before we get started, as we didn't load up any previously made maps, we need Substance Painter to um, kind of start off by creating maps for us, okay? So we're gonna go to the uh, texture set settings and we're gonna go to this button, Bake Textures, right? Now here I have the option to bake black metal textures for this guy up here, or simply bake all texture sets. I'm gonna go with that. And what it will do is it will create a normal map, a world space normal map, ID map, ambient occlusion, all this kind of stuff, okay? Now, you can select which ones you want or which ones you do not want. Uh, I'm just gonna go with all of them. I'm gonna set this output size to 2K. And uh, let's see, besides that, um, I'm good with it. So I'm just going to go with big all texture sets. Now it's possible that in your log file, you will get some error messages down here because I just simply decided to bake everything and for some maps, it needs additional information, okay? So don't be worried about that. You can see that it already has applied ambient occlusion uh, while it's baking it. I'll just uh, give that a sec until it's done. Almost done. bit more and there we go okay now I'm gonna click on shelf instead of log to get rid of that log so like I said don't worry about those error messages uh, we got that all set up and what you see here now is that it has created a normal map and so forth now once we start to add materials and smart materials to our object you will see that all these folders here and maps will be automatically updated okay which is cool 
All right, so let's get started. Um, first, I want to show you the view methods. If you go up here, you have the option to look at your 3D only, which we're doing right now, but you can also select on 3D 2D, which will um, real time show you your UV map as we created in Maya, okay? I don't like that, so I'm just gonna go with this guy. And that said, we're gonna go up to our layer structure here. Now, in Substance Painter, you have the option to add uh, simple materials, but you can also add the smart materials. And the difference is that a smart material is a pre-made layered texture. So for example, rough steel with a painted steel on top of it, with rust on top of it, with dirt on top of it, and so forth. Whereas with the normal materials, you would have to kind of build that yourself. And you have all these brushes and, sh and alphas and all kind of stuff. And I'll address all of that in future videos. So for now, we're going to keep it basic. Okay. All right. So we're going to turn off our Chrome here for a sec. We're going to select the black metal part. And we're going to go up here and we're going to go to add a smart material. And as we do that, and I got steel entered here. That's what I used last. Uh, let's see. We got uh, steel, dark, and aged. Let's give that a try. I'm just going to click on that. And down here, you see it's calculating. Let's see what that comes up with. Okay, and as we do that, you see that it now has added this material, which looks pretty cool. Very nice. And we actually have the option to tweak that. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if we go in and click on this material, we get this folder and we click on it, you go down here. And for example, I'm going to click on the scratches. If I do that, I can go in here and I can tweak by left clicking and pulling the level of scratches on my object, uh, as well as roughness. And you can see that it's up pretty much updating real time. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, the metallic look, you can adjust that as well, depending on whether you want it to be aged or not and so forth. And here are the folders that are impacted. So you get your normal, your rough height and so forth. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the uh, middle part here. Let's see. We'll do this one. Let's see if we want to change anything there. Subtle changes, not really, really visible, but we'll do the grunge. That's a bit better. Okay. We'll do the, uh, let's see, the intensity. Yeah, that's a bit better. I like it when it's nice and rough, okay? Now, the scale, uh, we'll bring that back. That's pretty much scaling the, uh, the folder, okay? Like I said, we're not gonna go nuts on that, so I'm happy with this, all right? So, what's next? We're gonna go to our Chrome. We're gonna turn off our black metal right here and then with that selected, we're going to go to, uh, where to go? Add a smart material. And let's call this steel bright layered. No, not quite. Let's see what else we got. Let's try this red just for the heck of it. Okay, have to apply to the right layer. Hang on guys. Yeah, my bad. I had uh, black metal selected, although it was turned off. It's supposed to be here. You can see that the layer stack is empty. That's the one I need to go with, okay? So again, uh, we're gonna select the smart material and kind of second guessing that red there. So let's do stained steel, okay? It's calculating. It should now apply it nicely to my objects and it has. So we're gonna turn back on the metal. There we go. Not quite sure whether that's, it's a bit dark and it looks a bit too much like the rest. So what we'll do is we'll go in, 
to our chrome layer we're going to select that we're going to go let's see here we got the base steel and let's see what we can do there that's offset hardness maybe not really any changes there dirt level very very subtle changes not much uh, I'm not quite sure if that's the one we want so I'm going to select it I'm going to delete that I'm going to add a different smart material until I find what I like best something that is a uh, fairly high contrast so let's try this okay yeah that's much better um, if you go in really really close you can see it nicely okay and we again can tweak that a little bit if you like so uh, let's see we'll go to scratches we'll you can see they can bring that way way up that's a bit too much so we'll kind of keep that down a bit like so the roughness you can tweak that if you like uh, let's see what else stains kind of cool our base color you can uh, change that uh, right now it's white you can tweak that if you like uh, let's go with something that would be kind of appropriate for a lunchbox like that it's kind of cool yeah we'll go with that okay let's turn that back on Okay, that looks pretty awful. So what we'll do is we'll just bring that back to white. Okay, but you get the idea. All right. So guys, that is pretty much it. Uh, I can go on and on and on and add scratches and dirt and all the kind of stuff, but that's not the purpose of this uh, tutorial. Uh, the purpose is to get you comfortable with the workflow and with the basics of Substance Painter. Just enough for you to get started, okay? So that said, thank you guys for watching and more videos to come, all right? Uh, if you are a, a patron to my um, channel, uh, you will uh, find this model uh, ready to go in the shared drive as usual. And if you want to become a patron, there are details below how to do that, okay? So thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.